Today, we are tackling one of the most common yet somehow most overlooked health issues in the entire world, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You've probably heard the name, but what is it really? We're gonna break down what it is, why it's happening to so many people, and this is the most important part, what you can actually do about it. So let's just kick things off with a number that should really make you pause. Somewhere between a quarter and a third of all adults on the planet have this. I mean, just think about that. The next time you're in a crowd, on a bus, at the office, look around. Statistically, one out of every four people you see is walking around with excess fat in their liver. And here's the kicker. Most of them have absolutely no clue. All right, so here's our game plan. First, we'll dig into just how big and how quiet this problem is. Then we'll trace the path from a simple fatty liver to a seriously damaged one. We'll get into the nitty gritty of the metabolic reasons this happens, then cover how doctors even find this hidden damage. And we'll wrap up with the most hopeful part, how you can turn this whole thing around. Okay, let's jump right into part one, a silent, widespread problem. We need to get a handle on what we're actually talking about here and who's really at risk. So what is NAFLD? Well, the name pretty much says it all. It's when your liver cells, which are supposed to be doing a million other jobs, start packing away too much fat. The key phrase here is non-alcoholic. This isn't damage from drinking too much. This is something else entirely, driven by our metabolism. So what's causing it? Well, it's a collection of things you've definitely heard of, the usual suspects. We're talking about obesity, especially that fat around the belly, type 2 diabetes, wacky cholesterol numbers, and high blood pressure. You know, when you see these things together, doctors call it metabolic syndrome. And here's the crucial insight. NAFLD isn't just another symptom of this syndrome. Many experts now see it as the physical manifestation of it. I mean, it's your liver basically screaming that your metabolism is in trouble. All right, let's move on. It's really important to understand that NAFLD isn't just one thing. It's a spectrum, you know, a journey. And it's a journey that starts in a pretty harmless, reversible place, but can end somewhere truly dangerous. So that journey begins with stage one, what's called steatosis. This is just fat in the liver. It's a red flag for sure, but at this stage, it's totally reversible. But if things keep going in the wrong direction, you can hit stage two, NASH. And this, this is the real turning point. Now it's not just fat. It's fat plus inflammation and actual damage to your liver cells. This is the aggressive form that really starts causing problems, and it leads straight to stage three, fibrosis. That's when scar tissue starts building up. And the final stop on this line is stage four, cirrhosis. The scarring is so bad that it literally strangles the liver, stopping it from doing its job. And this is why we're talking about it. This is the end game. When cirrhosis gets bad enough, it can lead to outright liver failure, where you'd need a transplant to survive. And it massively increases the risk for liver cancer. This is why catching it early is, well, it's everything. Okay, so that leads to the big question, right? Why? Why does the fat build up like this? Let's get into the mechanics of this, this metabolic meltdown. Imagine your liver is a super busy factory. And right now, that factory is just completely overwhelmed. It all kicks off with something called insulin resistance. Basically, your body's cells are starting to ignore the hormone insulin. For your liver, this is a total disaster, a real double whammy. First, your fat tissue panics and unleashes a flood of fatty acids that make a beeline for the liver. At the same time, your liver itself goes into overdrive and starts making even more fat from the food you eat. It just can't handle it all. It can't process it, can't ship it out, so it has no choice but to start storing it. That's hit number one. Now for hit number two. You see, all that stored fat doesn't just sit there quietly, it becomes toxic. It causes something called oxidative stress. You can think of it like your liver cells are literally rusting from the inside out. This damages the mitochondria, the tiny power plants in your cells, and that triggers a massive immune response. So now the liver isn't just full of fat, it's inflamed and actively being damaged. And that brings us to hit number three. Your body has a natural reaction to being injured over and over again. It creates scar tissue to patch things up. So with all this chronic inflammation, specialized cells in the liver get the message that there's constant damage, and they just flip a switch and start churning out scar tissue. The body's trying to heal, but in a tragic twist, the repair process itself is what causes the most serious damage, leading to fibrosis and eventually cirrhosis. So if all this is happening deep inside you, how in the world would you even know? This is the huge challenge in diagnosing fatty liver disease. It's called the silent epidemic for a very good reason. 
And this quote just says it all, doesn't it? You can have a liver that's already on that dangerous path from simple fat to inflammation and early scarring and feel completely fine. Maybe you're a little tired or have a dull ache on your right side, but usually there are no alarm bells. Not until the damage is already severe and sometimes irreversible. Because it's so silent, doctors have a whole toolkit to find it. They'll usually start with simple blood tests, looking for elevated liver enzymes. If those look off, an ultrasound can actually see the fat in the liver. It literally makes the liver look brighter on the screen. But the really critical question is, is there any scarring? And for that, there's a cool, non-invasive test called a fibroscan that measures liver stiffness. Just remember, a stiff liver is a scarred liver. The absolute gold standard is a liver biopsy, but these other tools are amazing because they help doctors figure out what's going on without having to do that. Okay, we've talked about the problem, how it gets worse, and how it's found. Now let's get to the most important section, the solution. And I'm telling you, the news here is incredibly good. Now, this is so fascinating. For a disease that affects a third of the world, you'd assume there's a whole pharmacy of pills for it, right? Well, there isn't. There is no single FDA-approved drug designed specifically to treat NASH. But on the other side, we have the most powerful treatment imaginable, the absolute cornerstone of therapy, lifestyle modification. Why? Because it's the only thing that goes after the root cause of the entire problem. So what does that actually look like? It really boils down to this one powerful number. Losing just seven to 10% of your body weight that's the magic number, it's the tipping point. Research has shown again and again that this is the amount of weight loss needed to start reversing the insulin resistance that's driving this whole mess. It's enough to finally break the cycle and give your liver a chance to heal. And what do you get for hitting that goal? I mean, look at this, it's not just a number on the scale, it's a profound change inside your body. You can wipe out a significant amount of liver fat, you can calm down that dangerous inflammation and actually resolve NASH. You can stop new scar tissue from forming, and, this is amazing, you can even reverse some of the early stage fibrosis that's already there. That is a huge deal. So the action plan? It's refreshingly simple, and it's backed by tons of science. Number one, your diet. Shifting to something like a Mediterranean-style diet, which means way less sugar and processed junk and more veggies and healthy fats, is perfect. And number two, move your body. Just aiming for 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise, like going for a brisk walk, is enough. These two things right here are the most powerful medicine we have. So let's just wrap this all up. The big takeaway is this. Please don't think of NAFLD as a final verdict. Think of it as a warning light on your dashboard. It's a message from your metabolism telling you that things are out of balance. But the most powerful part of that message is that for most people, it's a warning you can absolutely listen to and a condition you have the power to put in reverse. Which really just leaves us with one final thought. Your liver, this incredible, resilient organ that works so hard for you, it might be sending you a message. The only question is, are you listening? <laughs>